So I'm Josephine Mead. I'm the uh, Communication and Program Coordinator at Resartis Worldwide Network of Arts Residencies, calling from Zsa, Zsa Wurrung Country in Australia today. Resartis is a global network of arts residencies with over 650 members in over 80 countries. We work as a leading advisory body to ensure the global arts residency scene remains sustainable, professional, diverse, inclusive and transparent. We've seen many examples across the globe of how arts residencies are able to offer and create safe space and support for artists at risks. This was particularly evident throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, where many of our members adapted their programs to create online platforms and residencies, enabling artists to find moments of connection, care and exchange despite lockdowns. Each year, Resartis runs an annual conference at a different location across the globe to examine trends and issues of the international arts residency field. In September 2022, our annual conference was planned to take place in Kiev, Ukraine, as a joint project of Isolatia Platform for Cultural Initiatives, House of Europe, Goethe Institute in Ukraine, and the Ukrainian Institute with Zapravka. It would have become the first international forum for arts residencies of this scale in the Ukraine. The working title of the conference was How to Inhabit Instability. The Russian full-scale invasion of Ukraine changed everything. The conference was cancelled and Resartis redirected, redirected our efforts and resources towards providing resources for artists at risk. We promoted emergency residency programs through our membership and published resources for supporting artists affected by the war. We're very privileged to also be able to promote the work of important partner organisations who do specific key work to directly support artists at risk, such as Artists at Risk and Artists at Risk Connection. And today's discussion will focus on ways to build up an international support system within the residency field within these changing circumstances that we find ourselves within. The current exhibition in our Res Artist project space at our International Australian headquarters is titled Polytopia Rebirth, and it celebrates this. The exhibition has been curated by our member, Yoko Nagami of Koiki, a residency program in Japan that connects artists and cultural professionals in various social situations providing a springboard for international projects. Polytopia was a remote residency program by Kawiki that started with the pandemic in 2020 and was run from 2021 to 2022, with artists from Ukraine, Japan, Myanmar, Taiwan, Indonesia, Nigeria, India, and other countries in various social and cultural situations. The program was developed as a remote residency in which participating artists and cultural workers could collaborate to conduct their own research and creation remotely. The program has also provided an online forum for artists from each participating country to engage in dialogue with Japanese artists, curators, residency administrators and other cultural professionals to share their different situations, ideas and activities. Polytopia started in 2021, the second year of the pandemic, to follow Koiki's first remote residency, Creativity from Home, in 2020. This is a wonderful example of how a residency program can provide direct support to artists at risk. And Res Artis is very privileged and proud to be able to present the exhibition and also facilitate the discussion that will follow today. Um, so without further ado, I'll pass over to you, Yoko. Thank you, Josephine, for introduction. And uh, thank you, Resartis team, and uh, all of the people who are joining here. And then um, um, I'm also uh, want to show my appreciation uh, to all uh, people and uh, who are still continuing their creative practice in the difficult uh, social political conditions. And uh, actually, in Politopia, we are exhibiting the works of artist works uh, who are at risk. And then uh, today also we are sharing some um, examples and their experiences. And uh, also we can share the ideas how we can build up the support system in the residency field as Josephine uh, mentioned. And so uh, 
actually starting up um also i want i would like to touch on the uh, some japanese residencies uh who are still uh, really continued and uh, in during the pandemic time and uh, also hosting uh, as well as hosting their artists at risk and uh, today i would like to introduce uh, kogane cho uh, artist residency in uh, near Yokohama, which is a neighboring prefecture of Tokyo. And uh, also, as uh, uh, as though like she's not present today, but the Teiko Hinuma, who is running a Japanese uh, a residency network. And uh, she started an, um, a re residency in the Tohoku, uh, north part of Japan. Uh, where uh, actually experienced the big tsunami and earthquake and uh, also uh, nuclear explosion uh, in 2011. And uh, yeah, uh, actually I would like to share some links, but maybe Josephine, I can share later in the document or something. Yeah, okay, yeah. And then, so please uh, view some links about those residencies. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, yes, in the Tohoku residency, like Kesen Air that Teiko is running, they've been inviting um, lots of visiting artists from even from abroad uh, to interact and to develop their ideas with the local community of the devastated area uh, due to the tsunami. And also, I uh, would like to uh, thank Teiko, uh, who, who was trying to join this session, and then uh, she will also uh, share more updates of the residency. I'm going to share the document uh, to go with this uh, recording session. Thank you. And then, yeah, maybe I'm quickly um, introduce the participating artists uh, of Polytopia. Uh, who are actually exhibiting their works here in Melbourne um, in the project space, in the physical space. But actually, we've been trying to create, uh, they've been trying to create virtually and remotely and sharing ideas and developing their uh, own practice. Um, Olia Fedrova uh, from Ukraine, can you introduce a bit and maybe share your voice a bit? Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you, Yoko. Nice to be here, and thank you for for hosting uh, uh, us, Polytopia, uh, to res artist. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, uh, Olya Fedorova uh, from uh, Kharkiv, uh, Ukraine, but currently uh, based in Austria. Uh, so I'm um, working with the various media and exploring the uh, matters of language uh, and uh, transformations of uh, meanings and senses in the changing environments but mostly now working with uh, texts as a reaction to the war uh, in ukraine uh, for self therapy and healing i would say yeah thank you Leah. Yeah, it's uh, really uh, nice to learn how your practice have been developing and changed, uh, of course, due to the mm -hmm. war, the diff 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 difficult and changing situations. And uh, yeah, if you people are in Melbourne, please come visit and there's her works and the, their works are there in the gallery space. And then uh, Nana Vyakova, uh, also from Ukraine, but uh, maybe you can share share your ongoing situation as well. Hello. Uh, hello, Yoko. Hello, everyone. I'm happy to join you. And uh, yeah, thank you also for arranging uh, this, uh, the exhibition. So uh, it was possible thanks to people who, who made it. Yeah, I'm really amazed and I'm very thankful that uh, it's, uh, you did it. And uh, also, uh, yeah, I'm now in the, I'm, uh, yeah, I will introduce, maybe I will start from my practice. I'm Nana Bakova and I'm, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'm interdisciplinary artist. Uh, 
uh, mainly I work uh, with performance and video, and also I combine performance and visual art. Uh, I used to say that I'm uh, I I live between Japan and Ukraine, but uh, now presently I came back to Ukraine last year, and now I'm based in Kiev city. Um, so uh, also my practice is uh, related to with uh, memory and uh, lost objects. So um, uh, when I like, I also uh, did the project in my native city, Mykolaiv, in the south of Ukraine. So you can see it uh, in the galleries and just a fragment of it, a piece of it. So it's a combination also of video and performance. Uh, that, that's something also that uh, related to my story of coming back. Uh, last year and now I'm uh, in the art residency uh, so it's really like a not usual situation for me because it's my first uh, visit in abroad after immigration and after I came back so like first long visit so I have a lot of insights here and uh, also the, there is also another like uh, people from uh, different countries uh, together in one space near the sea so it's a really like <laughs> for now interesting situation and uh, yeah I'm uh, kind of in the house and uh, this residency uh, yeah I mean I'm in an isolated house <laughs> in there like somewhere in the countryside also as well but we will uh, come back to Bucharest and this residency the 20 days I think or 20 something it was uh, uh, organized by what's next programs it was founded by um, the foundation in Bucharest the Gabriel Tudor uh, foundation uh, they mainly work with performance and dance maybe I will also send the link so they have also art residency here in Bucharest that is like combination of of spaces for dance or performance work yeah, and the art residents and also Ukrainian organization, which I'm working with since I came back to Ukraine, it's Proto Produktia. So they also like help uh, an emerging uh, performers and artists to develop their practice for them, for those, uh, 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 yeah, also uh, Proto Produk, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Antonin Arto fellow, uh, Fellowship, so I was uh, part of it. So they like uh, mainly helping Ukrainian artists who stay uh, and performers who stay in Ukraine for the moment. So like regularly and a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm now like I'm continuing my practice uh, help like thanks to all these organizations that support uh, support our practice. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so I think that's shortly all. Yeah, really, thank you, everyone. Yeah, like, uh, so now, like, she's back in Kiev, but uh, she's kind of traveling, and finally, she made, yeah, she could, uh, she was able to go back to return her hometown in Mikolai in last year. But uh, she kind of uh, went back to her apartment and uh, Yes, she actually their apartment, her old home is still standing, and then she collected some memorable stuff from the apartment and made a performance. And thank you. Uh, yeah. And I, now I'm still continuing. Thank you so much. And uh, I would like to introduce uh, Soyun from Myanmar. Hi, Soyun. Uh, I'm an artist from Myanmar. Um, and currently, um, I am in Yangon participating a workshop uh, at the Qatar Institute of Materials of Life. And right now, we have a uh, Cambodian artist, Sophie Pitch. Um, he's here giving us a workshop. So um, middle, I'm in the middle of class and <laughs> coming out to do the Zoom with you guys. Um, yeah, so basically, you. I am a, a ceramic artist. I work with clay, um, but I also do a little bit of drawing and uh, sometimes I also like to make uh, books. So in this show, I, I put together some uh, some uh, an artist book that I use uh, uh, paper that I make from this workshop, materials of life workshop. 
Um, the paper is called Shan Paper, and uh, it's very similar to Japanese uh, mulberry paper and Thai uh, paper as well. Um, but when because I make it myself, I added my father's handwriting and uh, weave it and also add it directly into the paper uh, to sort of um, uh, think about um, our migration history um, as Yunnanese Chinese who came here after the Civil War. Um, so uh, listening to his stories and thinking about what's happening today now in Myanmar, um, everything is happening again. So I reflect that in the book. Um, usually I produce my work in residency uh, abroad um, because I don't have a studio here. My kiln um, is very small and electricity cut in Myanmar is very bad. So my ceramic practice is basically not sustainable here. Um, so yes, usually I apply to residencies and uh, rely on supports of organization to uh, keep my career going, produce more work, um, explore new materials abroad um, and things like that. Yeah, um, happy today to talk to everyone. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, so you Nice to see you. And then uh, thank, thank you, you for joining in the car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. uh, your work is finally yes installed and exhibited. And uh, yeah, so sh she's also trying to make her um uh, start her residency in Japan this year. And uh, we are trying to also support her in Koiki as well in Tokyo. So uh, yes, just fingers crossed uh, that she can make it. Uh, and Sabhash, uh, hi. And then Sabhash from India. She's he's also uh, one of the participating artists here in the exhibition. Yeah, hi, hello everyone. I'm Sabhash. I'm a filmmaker uh, from Mumbai, India. And uh, uh, currently I am south uh, south of india in bangalore and uh, i uh, 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 work in films i mostly uh, do uh, uh, fiction films and uh, 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 story based films uh, but uh, since uh, 2020 i started uh, uh, applying for residency uh, and uh, i uh, 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 got into uh, some of the residents. Maybe the connection is not good. Yeah, hopefully it'll be able to come. Sometimes it happens. Uh, and uh, yeah, so the, just uh, feel free to give me a shout. <laughs> Anything happened. Yeah. Sabhash, if he, the connection is not really good then uh, you can a bit, uh, share further more with later thank you and uh, as i also mentioned the koganecho residency and just uh, next to tokyo it's a kind of one of the most active uh, residencies in japan and uh, i would like terry uh, to introduce terry and elena who's there and uh, terry maybe you can uh, start uh, maybe sharing uh, about your residency. Hi, Terry, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you for having me, Yoko. Thank you, so, Joni. Um, <laughs> so Koga Nature Area Managed Center is actually um, the biggest artist in residency in Japan because we, uh, like our facilities is quite uh, huge. So we can host like 60, uh, artists at the same time and um but but the organization is a bit complicated because it was initiated by uh the government and police and the people from the local because this area was very uh, dangerous uh after world war ii until uh 2005 so the dark history uh is quite uh long uh and then like until um 2005 the mayor of yokohama he is very interested in uh, uh, culture so he actually um initiated even yokohama trinelli and then um so he just wants to use like use art to, to kind of like clean clean up this area 
but yeah anyway this this concept uh, is 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 quite like uh, um like so many people actually really don't like this idea because it's like anyway like we can all know so like past this debate part like uh we we are now really having so many uh, artists from all over the world and we um also having like workshops and uh, events uh with locals and artists all together so we we really like try our best to create um like kind of like a special place because for me like art in the museum always have like kind of like privilege because the museum is a like the physical um building has this like protection to 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 protect the art so inside like artists can doing really anything and uh only those um like art related people will go into and and then maybe have like a solid conversation but for the public i think always have those kind of like distance but here we really put artwork in um in the space owned by the locals and also like the organization itself has like a board member uh like most of them from the local so we we really gave the right to the local so they can actually decide on like what kind of artwork they want to exhibit or not so this is kind of like experiment for for me like Actually, at the beginning, I, I really didn't like this idea because like for me, I'm yeah, because I'm from like art school. So so uh, and also I um, had worked in a gallery in Hong Kong for many years. So so I, I was in the uh, kind of like privileged uh, zone. So when I came here and I, I started working in Koga Natural, like really so many things uh, made me feel very un uncomfortable <laughs> because like for me, ah, like local people, you don't know anything about art, like why you can, you know, like say those kind of things. But but actually it's very funny because um, now I'm really thinking um, like the two different groups. Yeah, of course they are totally different, but those debate like can create something new for me. Um, yeah, like, I mean, like art, like art uh, work for uh, only art people, like uh, in an academic way, they, they, they can improve, of course. But if we really open like the gate to normal people, like something also can happen. So um, yeah, Koga Nature is kind of those, um, uh, like really, really gave, the 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 uh, the vibes to to the local people and also to the artists. So, yeah, like Elena, maybe you you would know better because because in the she... street in the street <laughs> your story. <laughs> yeah, maybe if Terry, if you have some kind of images or like um maybe I think you have uh, some okay. images. So for website. example, nice. yeah, for the yeah. So for example, um. The dark history actually, uh, like after World War II, the like illegally immigrants from uh, other country, especially in a, like main, mainly from from China and Korea and uh, Southeast Asian, so they and also they they are all like uh, women, so they came here illegally and uh, sell their bodies to to the, like the soldiers and also the local people so this area was very famous for um like prostitute from immigrants uh countries so that is why like the people uh hate it and um because it's very dangerous for for them to to have a proper life uh and then the artists came here so they they want of course, this history is very interesting to them. So they will like create some artworks like very related to the history, but for the local people, they don't want to uh, like uh, see those kind of things because the history they want to hide. 
So there's always like a debate from uh, those kind of things. And um, so for me, it's, uh, for me, it's very interesting, but also a uh, lot of troubles happen. So, um, yeah, so I'm trying to understand like each ways. Yeah, and also there's so many other examples, maybe like too long to share here. But uh, now, now we are having this, uh, a, like a possible space to to creators and also the locals. So yeah, actually this place cannot really like make money or something. Yeah, because we have uh, the mission from the government because they are um, trying to uh, decrease our scale because they, they don't want to spend like more money on things cannot really create something <laughs> like economically. Mm -hmm. But like for me, um, like in a society, like in a, in a good society, you should always have those kind of like uh, un uncertain, like n cannot be defined a space for artists because this is a, uh, this is very important and also it's it's not um like straightforward but some way like in the future of course it will like affect a lot yeah so that's what i want to say <laughs> maybe too too maybe a bit heavy but yeah Thank you. Yeah, like uh, yeah, they actually their residency um that district used to be a red light zone, and they tried to renovate all the old buildings and uh, also uh, make it into more like creative space and studios. And but now they are hosting lots of um uh, local artists and uh, also international artists and creatives and uh, trying to build them more like also communal space. Uh, together with the local people, that's the area. <laughs> and uh, also maybe um, Elena, and uh, as um, she's then uh, also a studio residence there. And the uh, Terry, uh, you might also know more um, about uh, the resident artists who are taking residency at the moment, and uh, who also are kind of dealing with the. Uh, difficult social or political situations. So, but I, I, we can also, you can also share your perspective on that. And uh, uh, maybe Elena, you can also um, share your uh, exhibition that you hosted when you're an artist and then what your perspective on the ongoing situation. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, first of all, thank you for having me here. And so I thank you so much for, you know, uh, talking about Koganecho, which is um, uh, very dear, you know, to me. <laughs> uh, I'll just, you know, I'll illustrate a little bit this place because um, and maybe for people who are, you know, not in Yokohama, it's really hard to imagine. It's under a uh, railway and uh, there are a lot of really small, small Spaces, you know, it's like uh, what I call, you know, uh, the chocolate box. You never know uh, what's going on, you know. Um, you know, when you open the door, there is a surprise. There are a lot of small spaces, and each space uh, open the world of its own. Uh, some of the space in, uh, spaces occupied by small businesses. Uh, my neighbor, one of my like, several of my neighbors are. Um, uh, small uh, business holders like you know Izakaya, the small pub, small uh, coffee shop, uh, then again the residency of uh, artists. It's all big mix, and uh, for me, uh, one of the um, reasons uh, it's uh, very personal why I um, uh, decided to take participation in the residency, uh, there were like several things. I actually like very much that it's not uh, so formal. I like very much that uh, Koganechi residency is uh, uh, like, it looks messy, it's 
small spaces or like a small maze, a big maze. Uh, it uh, takes space between two stations, Koganecho and uh, Nihondecho. So uh, it's all like big world in between. Uh, it located uh, along river and Sakura Alley. And I chose my space, uh, you know, in front of the river. And I, from my very tiny studio, I see Sakura tree that changes seasons and it's very beautiful. And I also hear a sound of, um, of the train and that creates a very important connection because I was raised in a town in Ukraine. Um, girls probably know this Korostin. Uh, it, it is uh, <laughs> location of my grandmother house was very close to the rain station and the, like uh, uh, trains were passing all the time. So uh, for me, uh, sound of the train is like a lullaby. So uh, it connects me to very um, basic memories uh, without even you know acknowledging it all the time. Uh, so somehow you can find home in very, you know, <laughs> strange circumstances. So, um, and uh, going back to, uh, going back to size, uh, you know, uh, presentation, there are like problems and uh, how uh, we um, talk about uh, problematic things and difficult things, and maybe local people prefer not to think that, you know, uh, uh, there was prostitution before. Uh, actually, I suppose place that I'm holding, <laughs> it's a very small uh, space, three floors, and uh, very interesting. I have very interesting, uh, like, um, steps, uh, and uh, um, it's an interesting space to show work. Um, but at the same time, uh, we need to connect ourselves to different realities. And war is a part of this uh, struggle. You know, how we uh, show, how we talk about war is the, uh, at this point of time. And in Japan, people have quiet and, uh, you know, uh, daily life uh, that does not affect it by war. So uh, while I was... Uh, thinking about a previous show that I did uh, in my studio that gradually becoming a gallery <laughs> somehow. Uh, and name of it, uh, I gave a name to this uh, space, The Room, because it actually takes a space that is, um... <laughs> when I moved there, I decided I need only two things, you know, on my second floor where I will have a kind of office, uh, only uh, table and the chair. So I don't want to bring the chaos of my personal life there. I want to concentrate um, on the process of thinking and uh, creating concepts. Uh, I'm a photographer as well. For that, I don't need that much uh, the room. I'm a street photographer and documentary. I'm doing documentary. So uh, I needed to uh, limit myself also by space. So this is the room uh, that I'm inviting other artists to participate. And... Um, I was uh, thinking, you know, uh, how to show uh, work of um, that is related to war. And I was talking to my friend who also part, uh, takes part uh, of this uh, residency, uh, Nadia Olefir. She is an Ukrainian artist uh, who started to work with clay recently, last year. The whole year, she all of a sudden started to work with clay which wasn't her part of practice before and I was asking uh Nadia what are you doing what is your new work and she was saying to me Lena you know what I'm making stones you know and uh she couldn't <laughs> explain why she's really making stones at the beginning but then um she was talking that it grounds her and with this material she feels like she can um uh, she can proceed and somehow, you know, go through her emotions. Uh, let me show a little bit of that show, you know, of that exhibition. Uh, I hope I will go through the, okay, the share screen. Okay, I'm sharing it. Okay, do you see it? Mm, not yet. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
all participants have um access like uh, yes it should work for you now oh, and i know if you try yeah. again yeah um just a moment sorry okay okay i think now you can share uh you try um okay yeah 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 come yes okay okay yeah. good 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 Right. Okay, Thank you. so um, uh, uh, the exhibition the name of the, the title was The Garden of People, and um, uh, I called it uh, Ceramic Poetry because Nadia, uh, she did uh, two main things. Uh, she's a poet, so she presented her poetry that she was, uh, she wrote, uh, you know, for a long period of time, and her recent work in uh, ceramics. And uh, she uh, herself, uh, she was uh, uh, born in Melitopol and grew up in, at Energograd. And last year at summer, um, all surrounding that she knew, you know, from her childhood uh, were flooded by, um, by the explosion at the Kachovska uh, hydroelectric station. And uh, everything that she knew, the landscape, house of her uh, parents, everything was uh, under the water and everything was gone, you know, all of her memories, all of her small, you know, ways of walking and uh, remembering things. Uh, so uh, she started creating those stones and uh, they were representing for her also, she told me, you know, they are like people, you know, they have their limitations, their structure. Um, and um, she was going through this process of creation uh, through the winter. And uh, as you know, you know, spring starts at win winter. And um, in Japan, especially, it is very much uh, a season oriented culture. We always ex expect, you know, through the culture, we expect another season, right? So, um, uh, the show started uh, in anticipation to the sakura season, to the, you know, blossoming of sakura. And um, uh, we exhibited uh, Nadia's stones and Nadia's poetry. Uh, and I suggested that we will do something, you know, um, interactive. So we will invite our viewers to leave uh, uh, their impressions of the stones. So they will be... Uh, they can touch them, they can hold them, and uh, just write how they feel about uh, this uh, object. And we would put, uh, you know, they, they could put uh, their uh, impressions inside the stones. So um, it looked like this. And we also did a performance. We invited musician. She is uh, Chami Nagami, who is... Um, uh, she is a uh, um, pianist, but she is also a yoga teacher, and she concentrates on uh, spiritual music. So she did performance. It was uh, an absolute uh, improvisation, how she felt the space of the room and how she felt Nadia's works and Nadia's poetry. And everybody just sat on the stairs and they couldn't see her, but just to hear the voice, uh, it was very um, moving and uh, people came and said that uh, they felt like emotional release. Uh, it was like catharsis. Uh, so, and here you can see uh the space like this is the third floor so each person could have you know sit down um and uh just uh, take a moment and appreciate artworks uh, and here is nadia's poetry presented like this also a lot of texture and uh, she talks uh, about universe about uh, love relationships um and her um 
a poetry not related exactly to the current uh, moment of war, but it, it's just um, it's very exist ex existential, and um, you know she captures the continuation of uh, timeline in her work. Um, we can do it all of you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> but this is the ceramic work. And people would use, uh, you know, uh, this beautiful Japanese paper to write how they felt. And I, I can read uh, a little bit, you know, what the, uh, the note says. And this is the uh, stop stone uh, entrance to my room, to my, uh, you know, personal space. And in Japanese garden, uh, uh, tea garden, uh, this representation would say, you know, you cannot, you know, enter this space. So I just used a very traditional way in Japanese culture to say, you know, this is private. So, and people at the end, at the uh, closing days, we... Uh, we showed also uh, what uh, people, you know, viewers uh, wrote on the notes and what they put it into each stone. So the, the collection of visitors' uh, feelings with this. Yeah. So I can read a little bit what was written on the notes. Uh, for example, like, uh, the anxiety is inside me. I touch the stone and I feel it with peace. Um, another is feeling of pleasant coolness. Uh, another, I'm a little nervous. Um, or I embrace life. I embrace my heart. I embrace stone. Um, uh, another is uh, this moment is the moment of truth. Um, I feel peace and quiet. In other words, I feel openness. I'm like this stone lying in the sea foam. Another is silence inside me. And um, another example is love. Uh, so the idea of this interaction for me was, um, you know, artists always expected to uh give something right to show something and the artists in risk need healings need also to be embraced and that's how um visitors actually by saying how they felt and feeling the stones with their own feeling they change the reality of the stone they filled it with their own experiences and stones became something else so uh, in this way, uh, actually, uh, visitors could heal the artist itself. So I think um, that was important. And that was uh, like my way of thinking, you know, how to show, uh, how to talk about war and how to engage, you know, within this topic. Yeah. Thank you, Elena. Yeah, I actually visited her studio recently. And then, yeah, so she was running an uh, exhibition by the Nadia, that uh, Ukrainian artist. And uh, mm -hmm. so she's trying to create conversation uh, between the local and the visitors and the, um, the Ukrainian artists who's uh, continuing their practice in Japan, or also even remotely as they live in Japan, so they really need to um, continue uh, remotely or sending support to their homeland and the family and people. And uh, yeah, I think it's really, really, it was really nice and uh, warm, cozy space that you created. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Like a, what the what kind of reaction do you, do you get from the locals and then uh, also what then the reaction from Nadia and uh, after the show? Uh, 
Uh, you know, Nadia, she really told me many times that she felt um, like it's a very, very nice project. I mean, uh, she felt very much, uh, you know, um, she, um, I wouldn't say that she felt healed, right? We can't be healed really completely, so absolutely impossible. But uh, she felt... Uh, some kind of support and seen and understood. And it was interesting that some of the stones, like there was one stone uh, which uh, she thought uh, it's uh, like um, a water in the ocean because she likes to go to the ocean. We live close to, you know, Yokohama, close to the shore, right? <laughs> it's not far. And uh, some uh, visitors, they just wrote, you know, it feels like ocean, you know? So it, that communication, uh, was very important to her. She felt really seen and supported. And um, the um, uh, how locals felt, uh, again, uh, a lot of support. Uh, uh, for example, uh, you know, it's it's interesting. People who are not related to art whatsoever, uh, the uh, neighbor of mine, uh, he does something. It's, it's just his small space. And he, uh, how do you call it in English? When you go and... Um, uh, to get fish from the river. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, yeah, he, he just as a hobby. So uh, he protects, you know, um, you know, things at my space. So sometimes, you know, some flower can just because of the wind fly or, you know, from the, <laughs> you know, from the space or something like that. So if you always bring things and uh, another, um, uh, another um, a shop owner uh, with um, a small uh, small co uh, coffee shop. She always comes to visit and uh, to have a small talk. And uh, uh, people just come to appreciate it. And uh, I was surprised to see that people really spent quite a lot of time in that room on the third floor. Uh, they would just come, sit down, you know, try to... Um, enjoy the work, write down something, look into the window, see the view, because it's like it was created, it was um, designed as a stone garden with extended view, because what you see from the window, it's a sakura tree and the river, right? So that's how the, you know, Japanese traditional gardens are, you know, sometimes uh, designed. So it was quite space for everybody. Not only for us, you know, uh, for people who are affected by um, this current situation, but also for uh, people, uh, local people who are not affected by work, but people are affected by life, you know. We need mm -hmm. to go through life, and that's hard enough. Mm -hmm. So uh, connecting their own uh, struggle and understanding what, you know, artists is going through and um, this space kind of, you know, allowed to, for people to be together, I think. Yeah, on a very, you know, uh, intimate level. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine how, how the space and your, your curatorial... Thank you for coming. It was lovely to host you um... the other day. And for honey, Ukrainian honey, I still have it, you know, because <laughs> I still have this throat problem. So yeah, thank you. you feel with me. <laughs> Yeah, until now, so. you maybe. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. I think uh, like also the kind of in Koganecho, they can rent a studio with the long term for a long term, and I think it also helps the curator, uh, you as a curator, to continue and to host uh, artists at risk as well. Yes, definitely, definitely. Yeah, uh, it allows to. Um, to create um, deeper relationships, you know, uh, just to, to know people for a longer time. And uh, yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for sharing your, your exhibition and some your experiences and your views on the, from, your, from your practice. Uh, it's thank very you. nice and uh, yeah. And uh, also I think uh, Terry as a coordinator, as a curator, of the residency program. I think you, you've you seen some um, um, kind of effects on the residency, like uh, when you're hosting people uh, from different diverse backgrounds. 
and also some people with the difficult political issues, as you mentioned before. So, but the, also in terms of this kind of communal uh, exchanges, um, I think you've been, you've experienced some kind of you've seen some kind of effects on the on the residency program itself. What do you think? Yes. So, for example, um, uh, my my screen. Uh, okay. It's still like share the screen. Oh, okay, but never mind. Yes, oh, yeah, so yeah, nice. Andrew, if you'd like to just um stop sharing, perfect. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, yeah, I want to see every, everybody's face. <laughs> sorry, yeah. sorry, really sorry. <laughs> For example, we are now have a oh, you can share an the artist screen. from China, and she she actually um moved to Japan with her families three years ago because um like i mean in china maybe not like we we are not having a war right now but like china like the political uh environment is always very like tough and like people even still living in china most of them are very struggling so like she as an artist and also her husband uh as a filmmaker like they cannot really stand living in china so they decided to move um, to Japan, actually, many um, like artists and uh, um, people doing creative industry in China, they they are moving out of China. It's uh, uh, quite like the population is quite huge. So she she is one of them, and uh, but for her, like she she is for forty something, and um, so she cannot only speak Japanese. So actually, this decision for her was quite huge and she was very brave. So um, now she is really trying very hard to uh, build her uh, career here, uh, even like without any, uh, like any background. So when she knows this place, she, she was so happy. So, so she, she joined us and uh, she was very active and uh, very eager to talk to artists from different countries um and um yeah so so for for me i'm <laughs> like um i'm always very happy to work with her because she she is always like super positive and also she has like three kids like i cannot really imagine like how she can handle with so much like things at the same time but she is really coming to uh her studio every time so every afternoon she was there painting. Um, so it's it's very for me it's very um, like I feel so I don't know how to say it, but it's very complicated emotions uh, for me to 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 uh, working with artists like her. And so I always want to create uh, like events to gather artists from different cultural backgrounds and to, to communicate each other because I think since pandemic like uh we we like like any groups like kind of like a, a isolated so and uh, like even the internet connects each other actually for me it's not internet only maybe gather people who already share the same thing so I really want to break the like break the boundaries and also, like for me, Japan is very, yeah, I like Japan, <laughs> but like Japan has, I so do do, <laughs> has so much strong uh, culture itself. So like the boundary actually more obvious uh, compared to like Hong Kong and like those kind of, it's already international for so many years. So it's to, of course different. But it's also very challenging and very interesting because it's happening, like uh, uh, to 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 embrace, because also the the like the reality Japan has to uh, like uh, import more like labors and uh, even uh, like yeah labors actually from from other countries. So especially this area, Koga Natural Area, we 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 like like our neighbors are from really everywhere. So um, itself is already very interesting. So yeah, our artists also like facing the same uh, 
situation and uh, like the difficulties, like when they try so hard to really enter uh, Japanese society is also very challenging. So um, yeah, I want to help them. And for me, it's very like uh, uh, worth doing. Thank you, Terry. Uh, and you've been making lots of effort, I think, to try to kind of combine you know, the people from different backgrounds and uh, their practice, creative practice with the, with the um, you know, like with the commu local community. And then, mm -hmm. you know, also like as kind of a, in terms of uh, uh, the history of the district, I think it's kind of trying to um kind of um you know like uh, trying to create a different kind of layer on on the district i mean they used to be a let right zone and then now it's now being into transforming into a creative studio space and the platform for people to get together and then um, kind of um i think um uh, it, it's a kind of um, um, lots of different things uh, going on, like as you're hosting the people uh, at risk and they're also trying to continue their own practice in Japan, in a different country. And then also um, in, a, for example, that place like Koganecho, it's already kind of, uh, in history, it's a bit it got stigmatized by the local people, but uh, trying to uh, reconstruct in the um the um kind of um yeah the, the place i mean the district um in with the different uh creative people from different backgrounds so i think it's um yeah i can imagine there are lots of things going on and you are trying to mm -hmm. uh, rebuild the uh new uh, image on the mm. yeah, bit, yeah uh, actually artists they they are very uh clever and they 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 <laughs> collaborate with uh uh like local shops by themselves so so for me i just want to maybe give them idea or give like um a little bit support is already enough because like artists they are totally independent so mm. <laughs> like for, for me i just uh like uh, our our situation now need to be rethink i think because like the yeah mm -hmm. like the pressure from the government and uh, uh from the local <laughs> like this is what we have to face mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think uh from now on maybe uh we can a bit also uh share some more thoughts and ideas to uh, consider the possible support system uh, international in the re international residency uh, programs. And uh, also it's nice to, for, um, if it's nice to, to, for Olia and Nana and Soyun, if you can share some of your perspectives on it and uh, from your own experience, what kind of support system uh, we could build up uh, together and uh, well, not only in Japan, but uh, also in different countries and uh, with the people from different backgrounds. Um, Nana and uh, Olia, Olia, hey, sorry. Now you're back. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I think as an artist, uh, this is a difficult question because we don't plan for only um, but I think um, uh, for me, uh, when I want to do residencies uh, abroad, or um, if when I want to create work that I could make in my country, or when I want to make a okay, um, visa is always uh, a big issue. So for artists who reside in country that uh, that are in crisis, or uh, they feel they fear for the whole and they want to immigrate or uh, migrate or uh, leave their country and move to a different country, um, visa is always an issue. And I felt that a lot of residencies don't have visa support for artists. Um, 
just a visit visa is not enough. So like after one month, two months, three months, what do we do? Like if I were to really leave my country and go and make work somewhere else or resettle somewhere else, um, what kind of support I need? I think um, not just you know, like, of course, like money is a big issue. But before money comes, it's always the visa. If you have the proper visa, um, and the artists have skill, and they're permitted to work outside of the studio, you know, like, uh, to make income to generate income so that they can really settle into the place um, mm -hmm. to make their own work. Um, that's always a great thing. And that's not something that every residencies can do, I think. Um, because I I study in the U.S. and um, I wanted to stay there. Um, when I went to U.S. when I was young, um, Myanmar has is already very unstable. And back then, when everyone tries to leave, they never thought about coming back. Everyone tells you that you should just stay abroad, never come back. Uh, this country is hopeless. Um, mm -hmm. And everyone tries to stay there. Um, some people would apply for refugee status. Um, um, and things like that, um, but but yeah, I I own I didn't choose to apply for refugee status because at the time I don't see myself as a refugee, um, and I didn't have a clear understanding of the political history of the country and my situation back then. Um, and things got better after I graduate my um, college degree, and Aung San Suu Kyi became a leader, and the country was good. At the moment, very like very uh, bright future. Everyone investing, like everyone coming to Myanmar to like uh, to source the untapped resources. So it was bright and sunny and very good. Everyone was like, "Come back, come back!" Now is the time. And then you go back, and then now there's a coup. Cool. Everything happens again. Uh, now everyone mm -hmm. tries to leave again. And um, for me, if I want to leave, the first thing I think about is visa. So uh, I guess I, but but I'm just an artist. Um, I think in order to for artists to really move and settle somewhere else, and to uh to really get the help that they need, I think visa is a great issue. So for residencies that are really committed to serving artists and help them relocate or help them resettle in another places, definitely get in touch with lawyers or you know like um to find out ways that you can support an artist for from specific country um, that would be my first idea second idea is of course i have some sort of uh budget or you know uh monetary support so that they can just get started for a while um and after that maybe slowly after you have helped them find a way to support themselves, um, maybe slowly wean off of the monetary support. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, those are the basic things that everyone needs in order to really settle community. Otherwise, we will just be nomadic, leave, oh, okay, go another country, stay for a few months, visa expire, go to another country, stay for a few months and visa expire. You don't really build a deep connection to the place or the people and eventually you would you don't have a specific community that actually grounds you or you know um make you feel fulfilled and connected yeah. that yeah. those are my thoughts yeah, yeah thank you so young yeah she's a kind of traveling between Myanmar and Thailand and uh, yeah Hope if she can make her way to Japan. And uh, also, uh, Olia and Nana, what do you think? Yeah, I have a uh, kind of uh, privilege to view this situation also not for, not also not only from the perspective uh, as an artist, but also I'm now uh, engaged in the work of uh, Office Ukraine Shelter for Ukrainian Artists, which is an organization here in Austria that. Uh, was established as a reaction to the invasion like in the first week uh, of uh, the war and uh, it's been uh, supported by um, Austrian Ministry of Culture uh, and uh, there are like three headquarters uh, in um, uh, Austria uh, in Vienna in Graz uh, where I am and also in Innsbruck 
Uh, so the main goal of uh, the um, this organization uh, initially was to help Ukrainian artists to safely relocate from Ukraine and also like find uh, the basic things here like you know temporary uh, residency permission um, accommodation uh, and uh, like that's it uh, but also the um, aim was uh, to as it is a shelter for artists, what uh, artists need uh, is like to continue their work. So uh, Office Ukraine was really uh, engaged into helping artists to integrate in the local art scene, um, help them find projects, uh, residencies, uh, like studios uh, for some facilities to continue working but also what was very important and i think it uh, went uh, out very successfully especially here in graz uh, that we managed to build some community some um, together people like most of them are from Kharkiv, from my hometown and it's mm -hmm. uh, thanks to like particular people that uh, are like really uh, into it, uh, they were friends and uh, had collaborations with Kharkiv, like the Rotor Center for Contemporary Art here in Graz was uh, had a long term collaboration with the municipal gallery in Kharkiv, and uh, my best friend who is a curator, she came uh, and started like ruling the local office of Ukraine, and she helped me and also my friends to relocate and uh, like this was the personal driven um, thing to make this community work so that uh, not only people just come and stay here in safety uh, but that they have someone to talk to someone to share the feelings and emotion with because I felt it very um very very good i would say when i uh for the first first three months i was staying in okay before i was staying in kharkiv and i didn't want to leave but then when uh, things got tense in emotional way in a personal emotional way i had almost anyone to talk to except for my mom but it's not the same I didn't have a community anymore in Ukraine, in Kharkiv, in Ukraine, because they all moved uh, moved out. Uh, and uh, even now, uh, in Kharkiv, when I cons when I think about moving back to Kharkiv, I I had I really had this intention, but then I visited my hometown once, uh, like several times again, and I felt that I have much more here in Graz than in Kharkiv. Like, yes, in Kharkiv, there is still my home, my family, but all my community, the people, like my the people who for whom I would love to dedicate myself to help them and to, you know, to grow with and through them, they are not anymore there. They are all here in Graz. So uh, that's why, like, um, last, like, half of the year, I decided that I probably I will settle in here and also the offer from the office Ukraine to be a part uh, of their team came so I can like do <laughs> this thing officially um, but uh, yeah so I cannot uh, now see it uh, not only as my personal problem but as a problem of the community it's a problem of sustainability uh, because, uh, yeah, like Europe, uh, we, we don't have uh, this problem uh, with visas as so you, because, yeah, we had this uh, um, no visa regime with the European Union before, and it was uh, very easy for them, relatively easy to open up for like the temporary protection status for Ukrainian uh, refugees. Uh, but uh, they didn't think about it, uh, like the governments didn't think about uh, this war being so long. Mm -hmm. And they are now inventing the ways uh, of um, uh, how to um, manage it in the future. And uh, it's very, it's something that gets our community in a bit of a panic mode because mm -hmm. um, like our, this 
protection status uh, expires uh, next March uh, in 2025, and then uh, we will we are waiting which way uh, which legal way they will introduce. For now, the way that they came up with it's kind of like it won't work for most of us because it's like the uh, you know status for which uh, you need to have a certain um, amount of income, monthly income. But even for the local people, like it's like it's minimum uh, wage, uh, uh, 1,200 euros, something like that, uh, netto without like all, with all taxes already uh, calculated. But even for the local people here uh, in culture, for the Austrians who know language and, st and stuff, they uh, they don't make this money in culture because like it's we all agreed on working in art it's not the, the stable and not the biggest income that we could imagine like i went i went to it for that and left because i don't like it so uh and uh, now we're like uh, what should we do how should we uh you know like really everyone uh, abandon art and go to work in some you know places uh, outside art or combine these uh, with art so i'm now considering like really coming back to design uh to just to provide this amount of income just to secure my uh status here um like or to get a student's visa or whatever and for sure uh, for all of them you also need language like for me it's not such a problem because i learned very fast but for many of my colleagues uh, it's uh, it's a huge uh, obstacle and uh, also like uh, we are very like we're very grateful for what austria is doing for us and uh, the eu government and everything but for now it's like completely uncertain uh, and also with the elections upcoming in autumn it's also like like with the us uh, there are some um interesting people who may come to power who don't like who, who wants just all the refugees gone uh, whatever from whichever countries they are um yeah so we are kind of uh, in this um tense uh, situation but uh, hoping for the best and trying to communicate uh, to the authorities uh, who we are how our life work works uh, and uh, like who, what can we do for the local uh, you know art scene why should we why should they allow us to stay here and not just, you know, throw us uh, away? Uh, most of us just have no place to return. Like many people through, here in Graz, they relocated from the places that are under the occupation. Uh, and uh, like I'm from Kharkiv, which is also, I mean, it's 40 kilometers from Russian border. It's uh, like, even not mentioned the the situation with the community that I already told about, but it's like the matter of safety. So, yeah, but we are still trying to uh, do something that we can do right here and right now and support the community. Like, for example, recently we found this space, physical space for our community together and to have the like exhibitions and the studio. And this keeps us like the mutual work that we maintain. It keeps us like, okay, we are doing something, we are together and uh, let's uh, face uh, the upcoming future together. But this future is yet to come. So this, yeah. this is the situation. And uh, I would, uh, to sum up, I would say that uh, uh, for the main problem for artists ukrainian artists and like not only artists but ukrainian people uh, overall it's uh, we don't know what's going what's coming like even tomorrow it's completely um we are completely deprived of the privilege of planning ahead and 
if uh, the you know there are people like the authorities uh, the residency uh, institutions who can at least uh, you know grant us this like a bit of confidence a bit of you know of a hope to some confidence even that's is really helping even mentally because uh, as for me i feel it like very much when you don't know what is coming next you cannot work completely it's very draining so uh this is the this is the point even the slightest piece of confidence helps yeah that's <laughs> that's it for me sorry for a long speech but it's like mm -hmm. Thank you, Olia, for sharing the actual situation. Thank you. Thank you for the platform for it. Yeah, with your honest voice. I um, really appreciate that. Yes, I, yeah, I really understand that future is really uncertain. So, like, um, yes, yeah, so when and what would you need in that situation? And then also, Nana, as you already taking residency, and I, I think, I guess, you you already seen residency as a kind of support system while you're traveling so far. Are you mute? And then are you mute? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think now you can hear. Uh, well, uh, I'm actually like thinking about this, if, if it's support for me, because actually, uh, yeah of course it's support I, I can continue my work at least so i i really would like to continue working and uh, for me uh, actually somehow now for this period of time or life period the most safe i i understood that the most safe i feel maybe still in ukraine so i was because i was in immigration for a long time so i was really like I came back, I found my, like, in in some way, new community and new, like, organization for support. It's all Ukraine-based. It's not, like, still, like, it's my first, uh, also, like, not so many, like, organization abroad I'm working with now. So, but, yeah, I, I don't think, like, I have a lot of ideas about this still. So, not, like, I, I don't see a lot of organization networks that will, like, support us. So, it's very a few for me. And I'm really, like, uh, appreciating that even this I, I have to, like, to people with, uh, to work with. Yes. And about my experience now abroad, it's almost, it's the second month when I, I'm here. So it's a very unusual actual experience for me somehow. And uh, actually I, I work here a lot, so I cannot say like it's, yeah, I feel like in also in Bucharest in very like, uh, I didn't, I have not ever been here. And uh, I needed like to create a performance. You can like see it now in the space. It's just a small part, but actually, I created a really huge piece with uh, five video installations and my present performance with some structure. So it's all about my native town and lost objects and uh, my uh, things that I uh, used to identify as a part of me, but like objects. So it's a kind of complex and really huge work. And I tried to present it abroad and I had the only two weeks to prepare. And like, I have no community here or something. So it was very intense, very intense. So I'm not sure like I, that I would uh, like, I can do it every month like this intense work. Now is a, a little bit changed, but it's also very intense uh, art residency. So we have 10 people and we need to present something like in a day. So it's like, like this, uh, but also like this is for me a huge opportunity with this like support of uh, organizations and people I like to just continue my practice and to develop my projects because like during this residencies and exhibitions like I, I move I move on and for me this is really like important to stop even I feel like I'm stopped uh, for, for, from outside and even already like in inside sometimes so but somehow I, I know okay in future I have this like I have like some projects and this is like keeps me on for the moment yeah thank you I think uh, the long-term 
residency and uh, with the good support kind of financial ecosystem uh, would be really helpful for any kind of changing conditions. And also for the local residencies, I think those artists uh, uh, can actually bring new narratives in the local community, like uh, in Koganecho, what's happening in Koganecho. Also like what the uh, Elena and uh, Terry and the uh, people there creating and uh, kind of rebuilding the new concept of residency in the local community in Koganecho. Yeah. Thank you for sharing all the experiences and uh, your ideas and thoughts and uh, even in the changing difficult conditions. And uh, to kind of wrap up the uh, talk with the, uh, I would like uh, Josephine also to share some kind of upcoming resources from resources. I think you will have a conference in Taipei soon. Yeah, thank you. Well, firstly, thank you so much to everyone for, um, I mean, making such beautiful work for the exhibition, but also for sharing your stories today and doing so with such honesty and generosity. So thank you. We really appreciate it. Um, and yes, we have our annual conference scheduled for September 6th to 9th in Taipei in Taiwan. We currently have early bird registrations open. Um, and it will be a wonderful meeting of over 200 artists, uh, res artist members and cultural professionals from all over the world where we can discuss um, the current issues and possibilities in the global arts residency field. Um, so I encourage you to um, attend if you can. We're also offering online attendance as well if in-person isn't possible, um, which it isn't for many artists. Um, so... Yeah, I think it's been a wonderful discussion today. Thank you, everyone. And I know that we had um, talked about you doing a quick walkthrough of the exhibition, Yoko, with the iPad. Um, if we can do it within five minutes, we could do it now. Or if you'd like it to go longer, you could send me a recording later and I could add it. What, how do you feel? Yeah, maybe I can just quickly show this space, the physical space. Maybe some people might <laughs> want to look. Please. I'm very, very curious. Yeah, so just a, a bit. Uh, we'll, we'll, yeah. so. Yeah. so if you just want to turn the video on. Yes. Can you see? Yes. 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 Can you see it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So uh, this is the installation view from the uh, project space of Res Artists. And uh, now the Polytopia exhibition uh, with the participating artists here yes. exhibited. So, um, yeah, here is your work, Olya. <laughs> and then uh, others. So they actually developed the uh, uh, idea of uh, those works uh, since 2021, actually previously 2020. So it's already been like uh, three years and uh, two years since the full scale war started in Ukraine. And uh, all the, we are documenting also, we, we are showing the documentation of the, our sessions and the meetups during the Polytopia licensee. So uh, if anybody's around Melbourne, of course, please visit. And uh, also we're gonna share some online uh, captions and the uh, work descriptions so that uh, we can share uh, together with this video recording. So this is a kind of quick walk through and thank you again uh, Josephine and the rest of this team and uh, all the participating artists for joining yes so this is that wonderful thank you so much um, Yoko and everyone and I hope the rest of your day or evening depending on what part of the world you're calling from goes well and yeah we look forward to um, having people continue to engage with the exhibition over the next few weeks.